it's Marianne from Thrive with your video today. And have you ever been stuck sending back and forth emails to someone outside your organization just so you can keep them in the loop? If you are using Microsoft Teams, there is a better way. You can add them as a guest to your Teams channels so that you can um, communicate with them there as a guest. It's really quick, it's easy, and I'm gonna walk you through exactly how you should do it and why it's worth it. So let's jump so, in. We're gonna to head to Teams. I'm working in Teams on the desktop on my Mac. However, if you're working with the desktop version of Teams, it will be the same for you regardless. And when we get to the team, what we're gonna do is we, we figure out who we're gonna add a guest. And in this instance, I'm gonna to head to this one that I've got as a client test. We hit the three dots next to the team name up the top here where it says more options, and we're going to manage the team. So this will now open the section where we can find out lots of information. We're going to head to the members tab at the top here, and it's gonna show you who is a member and who is a guest. So I own it and my Team Thrive account um, is, a, is a member because they are inside my organization. A guest is someone that we're inviting from outside, okay? So because I'm a member, I can't actually add that. I don't think I can add a person from here. try this one there we go so this one because i'm just a member whereas team thrive if we look here and go to manage team and we go members i have the option up here to add because i'm an owner so you need to be an owner we've got a member or guest of this one as well but if i want to add a member to this team then i need to be an owner so that other one i'm not this one i am so here i can add a member and I can type in their email address. So I am going to type in my guest one and you'll see it's gonna pop a little guest there. If I select that one, we go add. And what it's doing is it's adding the members. And you'll see that it will now pop up here um, and it's not gonna pick it up because I am. So you type the full email address in and it'll label it. You can also include, you can actually give them a specific name. So if you would like that person to have a name that maybe when their email address doesn't actually reflect who they are or what their actual name is, you can name them. So I've obviously done this repeatedly for mine, so I have myself set up. Then what we can do is we can also adjust our guest permissions, which is an optional feature, but it's actually really handy. So when we're still in this manage team option, we head to settings and we head to guest permissions here. And what that allows me to do is I can, I can add some permissions that guests don't have by default. So I can decide if my guest coming in can create and update channels and if they can delete them. Now you can see the default option here is to not allow them to do that these are people who are outside your organization so you may not want them to be able to have that kind of control but if it's a contractor or someone that you're working with in a different kind of structure you may decide that that's okay and you can tick those and that will give them the option to do those things as well now what will happen at the other end so a guest is going to receive an invitation email to join via their own teams account or as a free user if they don't have a Microsoft account. So there's some flexibility there in terms of if you're working with clients or contacts who don't use Teams or Microsoft natively in their own day-to-day -day work. They will have limited access. A guest doesn't have the same privileges as someone inside your organization, but it means they can see the conversations. So from my team here, they'll be able to see the post page, they'll be able to see the files page um, and all the conversations that happen within that team. Just not private channels unless they are specifically invited, which makes sense because it's the same for people inside your organization. Now, as a pro tip for you, a little bonus tip, if your guest cannot see the team, if they can't find it, then check your org settings. Now your IT, or whoever's sort of in charge of your Microsoft account may need to allow guest access at that top org or tenant level. Um, and it's one to flag with IT support if this isn't working for you at any point. No tech stress, super simple. 
and one of the easiest ways to make your life and your workload so much smoother. If you found that this video saves you from some inbox pings or calendar invites, then be sure to give this, this video a like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my Microsoft 365 tips. I drop a practical common sense solution so you can work smarter every single week. Now, uh, if you are looking for more productivity wins that don't require you to take on another program or another app open on your computer, then check out my micro magic tips. The link to that membership is in the description for this video. And it's a way for me to share more insights with you direct in your inbox every day so you can take action without having to take on extra tech. Um, don't forget to share this video with anyone else you think who might benefit from it. And if you've got any questions, you can pop them on this video or you can find me hanging out on Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. Just search for Thrive Admin Services. Cheers.